Hey there folks, welcome to Boating on a Budget with me, the tight Yorkshireman here on our project boat, Leander Lady Today, we're going to be hatching a plan because it's time to start rebuilding this The idea that we've got in mind for it is that this top section is going to lift up and these doors are going to open out and that's going to leave a whole space to let plenty of light and fresh air into the boat but we realise that's going to be quite technical we've got to get hinges and struts and probably bent timber with steel bent over the top for the roof and, the, and it's all obviously the, the key to it all is it's all got to be waterproof it's all got to be watertight when it's closed up that's going to be the tricky bit so we're calling this episode hatching a plan so the idea of today's build is I'm going to do a framework all the way around get some doors on and get a roof on it that will just be solid and fixed in place from there I can then develop the idea and then when we come to do the other hatch down the other end I can probably evolve that idea and the one down the other end is probably the more important one if you like because that's the one in the kitchen where we need the ventilation and we want the extra light coming in need to give Dawn something to look at when she's doing the washing up don't I there's going to be a large amount of winging it on this then I've got some timber, I've got the tools out I've got a brew let's get cracking first job then was just to cut the little bit of tongue and groove off that was overlapping that we've done on the inside and if I just hold that up you can probably see there running along the bottom it's not perfectly flat this kind of wavers up and down and we're going to find that all the way around nothing's perfectly square, nothing's perfectly true so it's going to mean everything's going to need shimming, packing, bits of chewing gum, bits of wheat a bit sticking in there. We'll find a way. Well, I've got a feeling today's going to be a tester. And I think that kettle is going to be getting a fair old bit of use. I'm going to try and get this back one on first and then work my way round. That's plan A. Let's see what plan we get to by the time we've got it done. To make the main framework, I've just got some 5b1 PSE. Overall, in the fullness of time, we'd like to rebuild it using some of the reclaimed timbers that we've got. But like I said, this is going to be basically a test run. Make sure we kind of understand all how the angles are working and things. And then on the next one that we do, hopefully we can perfect the technique and we can use the stuff that we want. looking all right the thing is obviously that's lined up sort of to where we want it height wise but obviously it's going to be too deep in there be banging my head on it so I'm gonna to have to cut it off along that sort of height so I'll give it a quick measure let's cut along there that's got it cut to the right size then what that's doing is it's leaving a little bit of a reveal on the inside we want that because we don't want to try and get exactly flush it'll never look right we want a little reveal on the inside that'll just act as kind of a border around the hatch the countersinks i've done there i've done quite deep because i've got the plug cutter that i'm going to cut some plugs out of some scrap timber and then once the screws are in and tight you tap the plug in, sand it off, and you can't see where the screws were. That's the only way of doing it when you've got to screw through the face of the timber and you want to hide them screws best you can. Now I've got one end in, it's all about just using the eye, lining it up. Because as I always say on this, nothing's perfectly square, nothing's level, so you try and get kind of this end in and then see how it looks at that end up and down slightly I'll go inside and have a look from there just make sure it's looking right against the ceiling so I'll just getting it right to the eye now I'm happy after a bit of fiddling I've got that in right I whip them screws out pile up some more a little bit higher up as well and then fasten it back on with some adhesive knowing this is only a medium term kind of solution I'm not going to put loads of adhesive on 
because it obviously will have to come off at some point but it still obviously needs holding on properly for now so we need a bit on there that'll just help those screws hold that one in place and obviously this back one is perhaps you could say the most important because that's the one that everything's built off so we don't want that moving at all I'm happy we've got that first one in right got to be time for a swig of me brew I've got all sorts of angles going to be going off on this piece then the main thing I want to start with is to make sure this board and that board sit flush up together so if I get it in the right sort of place nice and flush at the top and then square in that corner so it's not either tipping one way or the other from there I should be able to mark out the rest of the angles that I need already I can see these boards are a bit bowed and cupped but I think but once I get some screws in that'll pull them back into line so now I've got them screwed in I can work out mark on the back there where I need to cut it to get this angle coming down on this piece of wood and mark it along the bottom where I need to cut it to size once I've got that trimmed all the way along, we'll then have a look at that corner bit. That's that one roughly in then. So next I think I'll get that upright roughly in and then we can work out what piece we need to join that corner up. But that one's going to be the tricky one. So with them two pieces in, this is where it gets a little bit tricky. Because I now need to cut these so that I can put a section across the angle there. And I'm thinking the way to do it, if I put a mark across here in line with that angle and then cut down at 45 degrees there and then the same across the top where it bends down, put a mark across and cut back at 45 degrees there. I've then got two set angles and I can cut the piece that will join in between the two. That's the theory. Let's have a go. And this is precisely why using this as a dummy run instead of going straight in with that reclaimed timber is paying off because in essence that one is now wrong cutting it at the 45 degree angle which seems sensible to do them both at 45 degrees has brought this piece so it's too low down so looking from the inside it doesn't line up to where those angle pieces are the ones that caused me grief before so I now need to recut another one of these with a slightly less angle probably about 35 degrees i'll measure it up and then that piece when cut will follow the angle of that and we'll be on to a winner new piece cut then that angle is now 32 and a half degrees as opposed to the 45 i started with but that's now going to allow it to follow this line on the inside the next thing to do is just get that up there and then i need to mark on the inside the angle so I can cut that and piece that one in yeah that's definitely got the angles right so once that's sanded over that'll be perfect the tricky thing is now is obviously this timber and this timber because of the way the boat's all twisted aren't running perfectly smooth so I'm gonna have to get that in get a couple of screws I can sort of pull into that and probably one through the face there that again I can plug afterwards so you'll not see it maybe the same there or even coming up from the underneath just so I can pull it all in so that this piece joins in nice and smooth to those two I've got that one screwed in there then and I've got a screw ready to pull in there I want to line this top bit up first and what's, what it's trying to do is this piece is trying to pull too far that way and then push out of the bottom so I'm thinking I can just get a little chock of wood in there just to line them up then screw this one so it pulls that in flush and then tighten that one up yeah that's got it at the bottom there and at the top there there is a fraction of a lip there 
that's just from the boards cupping themselves. I'll be able to get that just with the sand over with the sandpaper, so not too worried about that. Same down the bottom here, this one's actually pulled in further than this one. So if I take this little wedge and I'll go inside, just push that up from the back until it's in flush, screw that in and then cut that off. And again, by the time it's trimmed out in there, you'll not see that either. This side then is basically done barring a, a sand over and some plugs putting in to cover these screws up. I've now got to replicate it just here though, so that the two sides match. And I must say, looking at it, I'm not overly happy how this angle's worked out. I think in hindsight, I could have come down maybe there rather than at the 45 degree angle from that. When we come to do the front one and we, we do it in the reclaimed timber, I think that's what I'll do. I think it'll look aesthetically more pleasing, shall we say. But as a first run, I'm quite happy how that's coming out. Because especially by the time these are plugged, sanded, painted, I think that's going to look pretty much bob on. There we go then. That's the basic construction for the hatch opening done. Simple as that. It only took about six hours. It works out about an hour a piece of wood that I've cut there. Obviously there's the final bits to do, I need to, to cut them plugs, fill all these screw holes, so we're going to need a coat of paint and sealant all the way around it. Then we can actually get on to building the hatch top and the hatch doors. Cutting the plugs to go over them screw heads, fairly simple. Got the attachment in the drill, just get some off cuts of timber, of which we've got quite a few, which suggests just how tricky that's been. there we have a plug exactly the right size to go into them counter sinks fitting the plugs then dead simple get a bit of glue just normal pva glue squirt it in there get your plug tap it home get a chisel Take the end off, normally leave it a bit proud, once it's actually dried, then go over it, sand it down, it looks beautiful. There we go, all done, sanded, ready for painting. Obviously once we've got the top and the doors and everything on that is. And although this one's come out alright, and it's perfectly usable and it'll do the job that we want, I think I have learnt a few things along the way, a few little tips and tricks about the techniques I've been using and also just things to watch for on the fact that the frame and things aren't quite in square and getting these angles cut right so it looks perfect when I come to do the other one with that reclaimed timber. Having decided to have the hatch top fixed as opposed to being hinged to lift up. That made it relatively straightforward to build. We basically just needed two pieces of timber cut to the right size. One for the top and one for the angled section that allows the rainwater to be taken away from the doors themselves. These two pieces join at a 45 degree angle. So that meant one edge on each piece had to be cut at 22 and a half degrees. That way they meet perfectly. Next we needed to round over the edges for that professional finish. So it was time to get the router out. These two battens are cut with a 45 degree angle on the end. That's to give extra support to the join where the two panels meet. These were added as this potentially could be the weak point of this whole construction. Where these two points meet, it's essential that it stays watertight over the coming months and years. These allow extra glue and screws to be added 
to make sure nothing can move. Now it's time for a dry fit, just to make sure it all lines up beautifully. And yep, yeah, I'm happy how that's all looking, so it's time to get the screws and the glue out. Let's get it fastened on. With the prep work out of the way, this was all relatively straightforward. Plenty of adhesive to make sure it's all sealed, and then plenty of screws to make sure it's held down nice and tight. The only tricky bit here was making sure it was all lined up perfectly and making sure that crucial joint across the top there was lovely and tight. Like I said earlier, that's potentially the weak point in the whole project. I needed to make sure that was perfect and watertight. Just as a finishing touch to the framework, I added this facing timber. That just makes it look a little bit more decorative as you look at it from the front. Potentially it's not actually essential because I could hang the doors off the framework that was already there. Personally though, I think it's worth the extra bit of effort as it will look much smarter once it's completed. And as that finishing touch, it was simple enough to make as well. Just some pieces of 2x1 timber, with the corners cut at 45 degree angles, so it joins up nicely. Then obviously the screws, countersunk and plugged, for that perfect finish. It's more or less a test run then, I think that's come out quite good. There's been a few bits that I've learned as I've gone along which I can adapt for when I do the other one down the other end. There's things like this overhang gear could have probably been a bit longer than it actually is so that the water would actually drip away from the face of the, the doors rather than tend to run down them as I think it's going to do. There's also things like where I've drilled the, the screws to put the plugs into, the dowel plugs. I've perhaps not countersunk those far enough so the plugs haven't really got a chance to bite into there. So I need to make sure I properly countersink those screws in future. But I'm pretty happy how that's all come out. Looks nice. A couple of coats of paint on there to fit in beautifully. I am now going to quickly knock up a couple of doors out of a little bit of the plywood I've got left over. They'll not be the, the final doors. Not by a long shot. We've got something in mind for those. But for now, to be honest, I'm running out of time because I'm back to work tomorrow. And we need some doors on here, so I'll quickly cut a couple of pieces of plywood to the right size, a couple of hinges, and the only hinges I've got on me are cabinet hinges, obviously again not perfect, but at least it'll get some doors on, and I can get off to work for a week, so I can earn some pennies, ready to finish it off. If I just jump in there then, and show you a few pictures once we'd actually completed the doors on there. As we come to fit the permanent doors, I'll record the process of that, showing how we route her out for the hinges and line it all up. That's another video to look forward to in the future. So hopefully you've liked this video. It's been a bit of a funny one because obviously I've been learning just as much as you've been watching. If you're not already subscribed to the channel, click the subscribe button. Also ding the little bell and you'll get notifications as we're doing stuff in the future. But I think then, for now, all that's left to do is for me to say bye-bye. See you later, folks.